Hello lovely people, welcome to my channel. My name is Myra. If you are returning, thank you so much. If you are new here, please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that fun stuff. So today I am going to share with you guys a tour, an updated tour of my in-home daycare. Be sure to stick around till the very end because I am going to be answering some frequently asked questions that I've been getting. Also, you will hear my kids, they are upstairs and you will hear the birds that are outside. Can't escape it. But anyways, let's get right into it. Now we're gonna go ahead and start off on my entryway. I do have a tour from last year, so I will link it if you wanna go and watch that. But this is just pretty basic. We have the calendar for the month. I'd like to post some of the work the kids are doing. I flip that around because that has my business name on it. Um, I have some business cards. Okay, so right here in this little drawer, I keep some extra face masks. And let me see, moving on, the rug is from Costco. It is washable, so that is great. Um, I did mention in my last video, this little rack, what is this called? I call it the shoe rack, but it's probably not what it's called. I got this off offer up and I paid like 30 something bucks for it and it was so worth it. So I'll always shop around ladies. Um, this is my parent board and for some reason this camera doesn't want to focus on it. So I usually don't have this covered, of course, but you know, safety purposes. <laughs> but that is, um, just has all my licensing information. So this is just a quick overview of the entryway. I'm trying to go so slow so I don't make you guys sick. <laughs> but here we have it. So in my last video, I got asked a bunch of times, where do you change your kids? So I am about to show you the closet of everything. Please no judgment. This is the closet I am talking about. Dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> I'm kidding. So here it is. This is the closet of everything. I store everything in here, as you can see, personal and daycare stuff. And this is my changing station. I only have two kiddos at the moment that are needing diaper changes and they're going to be potty training super soon i don't need a whole changing table i don't i personally don't think it's necessary the youngest kid i've ever had was 18 months so i probably won't be investing in a changing table but here it is super easy and simple moving on so here is that closet and we go this way and here is the entrance to the playroom now I have this gate here because I need separation from the daycare to my actual home but I have had this since the beginning since I opened the daycare but here we are here is the playroom once again I'm trying to go so slow so I don't make you guys dizzy here we have it And yes, I already did whip out the bunnies because who doesn't like bunnies? <laughs> so starting off over here, here we have all the little cars. And also I want to mention the daycare never looks like this ever. The kids turn it upside down. This is where we do like our morning calendar. Um, you know, I ask the kids the weather, day of the week, month. So that's usually what we do in the morning. Now this wall is going to be used for a project. I want to add a tree here. I've actually been wanting to add a tree for quite a while now, but I just, I keep putting it off because I do need a lot of materials, but I will show you guys what I mean. And here we have this wall. Now this um, whiteboard was in the room next door that you will see in a little bit, but I decided to move it out here because this way the kids can actually write on it. When it was in the other room, it was way too high for them. A new addition that I added is this chair and the little, well, I didn't just get this book rack. I've been having it, but I moved it out here. And this is where we have morning circle now. The kids will sit on the mat and I will sit on the chair. And whoever's doing well that day, who's ever on their best behavior, they get to sit on the chair. <laughs> so that's always fun for them. And then this is just the view of these toys now this is the view of the kitchen i know i've talked about this table before i have a strong 
unhealthy love-hate relationship with this table. It can be flimsy, it stains horribly, but I have learned to love the convenience of being able to move it. I was looking at a very heavy wood table and I opted out purchasing it just because when the weekend comes, I always just store this table and then I can have my kitchen back for at least the weekend. Very simple over here. Now, one of the questions was, how do I organize my daycare stuff? I decided to pick this corner of my kitchen to be dedicated to daycare. Um, for example, I have just one. I have specific drawers for everything. Um, this is locked. Let me see if I can do this one handed. I store some daycare stuff in here. As you can see, I like to keep everything organized. I'm already stocking up on the cotton balls for the Easter projects. <laughs> right here, we have a lot of the expo, what is it called, the dry erase sheets, where the kids can just write on them and erase them. And then, of course, it's still my kitchen, so I have a juicer down there. <laughs> but the kids don't have access to this because it's locked. So moving on, here is one last look at the whole playroom and I will be linking stuff in the description so be sure to check that out. Now we're going to be moving to the room next door and this is the classroom and I'll explain why. What you see when we first come in so this was nicknamed the classroom because when I had distance learners, they would work in this room. But I since have moved everything educational in here and this is where we work on our puzzles, on our letters, everything that you can think of educational wise is in here. And that's why I love that table from the kitchen because I can easily put it in this room and accommodate all the kids. These little aprons are from Ikea, and originally they're like $5.99, but last time I went, I got them for a dollar each, so that was the score. And then we have just a bunch of puzzles the kids like to work on. We have the blocks, more puzzles, more blocks. Now, only my preschool each kids are using the blocks. Any kids that still have the habit to put toys in their mouth are not allowed to play the, with the blocks right now because, you know, the world. <laughs> so right here is the closet. I keep the cots in here, extra chairs. Right up here I have some leftover seasonal stuff. I have party supplies, books, more blankets I believe. <laughs> These are more of those aprons. On this side we have the nap blankets. Now you never want your blankets to touch for your kids. Before COVID, I would separate these and put them in baskets. But since COVID, I've washed these every single day. So that's why they are stacked on top of each other because they are washed. Um, and then plushies, the kids are not allowed to play with. Um, these are not wipes, these are more blocks. And then we have some chairs there. Pretty simple. So let me give you one last Look at the layout. We are leaving the classroom now. Let me turn very slowly. And this is the playroom. If we keep turning, this is what the kids like to call the haunted hallway. <laughs> it's not haunted, I promise. But as you can see, the restroom is this way. So this is my garage door and it will always have the lock. It's become such a habit that even on the weekends, I put the lock on. <laughs> so coming on this way, this is the restroom. Now it is a very plain, simple restroom. As you can see, um, I just want to show you real quick. In here, this is where I store my go-tos for restroom necessities. <laughs> I have my gloves, my towels. Now, when COVID hit, 
and everybody and their mothers needed paper towels. I went to Costco and I bought the huge packs of these washcloths. I don't know what they're called. What are they? They're like cleaning rags. But I bought the packs of those and this is just what I use on the daily now. I will have to restock this like three times a day. But that's fine. So we just have some wet wipes, the rags, so the kids can dry their hands and gloves, air freshener, of course, it's the little restroom. And then we have the lock up there for the cabinets. And that is pretty much it for the restroom. So this is the hallway leaving the restroom. Here we have it again. So we have the classroom and then we have the playroom. Hopefully this camera stays focused on me because I did notice I was having a hard time focusing while I was recording. I hope you guys enjoyed that quick little tour of my daycare space. If you go watch my last video, you will see that some things have changed, some things haven't. So now I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions that I have received on my daycare videos. Where are my notes? Okay. <laughs> so the first question that I get asked a lot is how to come up with tuition rates. Now, this is a tough one because it's different for all the areas. I would say start off with determining how much you need to survive. So add up your bills, add up your mortgage, add up car payments, anything that is under your responsibility to pay, figure that out. What is that amount? And then go from there. Also keep in mind that you will have to be spending on cleaning supplies, which is a lot since COVID, a lot of cleaning supplies, but it is a write-off, so keep that in mind. Um, let me see what else. You wanna keep in mind projects that you'll be doing with the kids. Are you on the food program? Are you not on the food program? How much money out of your pocket is going to be utilized for meals? Um, and then go from there. Also, call around to other providers in your area. Honestly, when I started calling around, I always pretended to be a parent, but, I kind of regret that now because I feel like if I would have been honest with all of the providers, I would have uh, been able to get better advice. I know it's nerve-wracking starting something new, but there's really, really nice people out there. This job is very isolating, so whenever we can make new friends, that is wonderful. So, you know, just call around and ask what their tuition rates are. Some of them won't want to tell you because there is this thing about creating a monopoly. You know, just understandable. You also want to keep in mind what services are you providing? Are you providing meals? Are you providing transportation? Are you providing extra long hours? So keep in mind, you never want to go too high, but you absolutely never want to go too low because that is when you start getting the people that are just looking for cheap prices. And let's be honest, let's be realistic. Those type of people will just keep going to the cheapest one that they can find. And that's not very steep. So, you know, value your work. Being a childcare provider is not easy. It is definitely mentally and sometimes physically draining. So just keep that in mind. A couple other people also asked, when do you get daycare things done? And someone asked about the cleaning situation. Um, she asked if I cleaned during daycare hours or after, I believe. So I will be honest with you guys. The beginning of this year was rough for me because didn't I mention the birds? There they are. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. Um, the At the beginning of this year in January, I felt like I was hitting a wall. And I felt like I was hitting that burnout phase, that burnout stage where you're just like done with it. I wasn't exactly done with it, but I was feeling unenthusiastic about it. I know I mentioned it in one of my videos. After Christmas, after all the Christmas decor came down, I had no idea what I wanted to do with the space and what vision I had for it because I just wasn't feeling it. I decided that I needed to dial it back. I decided that I needed to stop letting daycare take over my life because I was doing it on the weekends when I didn't even have kids. I was prepping on the weekends when I should have been with my family. And this is a discussion that I had with my husband many times because he would get so upset with me when he was like, let's go watch a movie with the girls. Um, and I'd be like, wait, I have to get this done, this activity done. 
And the worst part would be when I spent a whole weekend planning something and then when it came time for it, the kids weren't even into it. That was the worst. So I told myself, that is enough. You need to really cut back on how much you're doing because you're not gonna last if you keep doing this. So I decided to give myself set hours. I clock in at 7 a.m. and I clock out at 6 p.m. My first drop off doesn't get here until close to 7.50, 7.45-ish. But most of the time my kids don't get here until eight. So that gives me almost a solid hour to get whatever I need to get done to prep. And I close at 5.30. So that last half hour I am cleaning. Well, I actually start cleaning at five and that is the time where my kids are just doing free play. On Fridays, they watch TV, something educational. So I start cleaning then, and then I continue cleaning until six. When six hits, I'm done. I'm done for the day. During the weekend, I do not worry about anything daycare related at all. I will leave that until Monday morning at seven. <laughs> and I've always had two phones since I started my business here. I've always had two phones, so my daycare phone will stay in my office during the weekend. Of course, if it's like an emergency, I will reply to the parents, but if it's something minor, I, I don't even bother. Sometimes I don't even look at that phone the whole weekend. So that is just some advice I would give to new providers. Don't let it take over your life. But if, I mean, if you want that, if that makes you happy and you're comfortable with it. I know I know providers that have been doing this for 15 plus years and that has been their daily since they started and they are completely fine with that. So it really just is a person by person case, but that is just my advice to new providers. Do not let it take over your life. Next question, which kind of goes, goes in hand with this. Uh, the last question, do you see yourself doing this long term? Um, I see myself doing this in five years. Do I see myself doing this in 10 years? No, possibly not. Um, never say never, right? But I don't. This job was a way for me to be able to be with my children and still have an income. And that is, you know, the reality of it. I feel like once my kids get old enough for like the school age, I probably won't be doing this anymore. Also, Omar and I do have something in the works, a little project, which I won't talk about just yet. So you'll have to subscribe down below so you can be in the loop. But yes, um, long term, maybe five years, 10 years, probably not. But you know, never say never. <laughs> the next question I get asked a lot is, do your children have a hard time adjusting? So I'll say my oldest, she's five. She loved it from the beginning. Absolutely loved it. But Dalia absolutely hates it. And still to this day, she has a very hard time just adjusting to the idea. And I've been doing this for a while now. And she still has a hard time adjusting. And probably a lot of providers that have younger kids go through the same, I'm guessing. Just, I feel like kids feel like, hey, I'm sharing my mom. Like, why is my mom giving that kid attention? She should be giving me attention. But I, I do treat my kids exactly the same as I would treat any other of my kids enrolled during daycare hours, I treat them all the same. During daycare time, I don't want any of them to feel singled out. I just don't want them, don't want any of my kids to feel a certain way or feel like I have favoritism. I know it's hard to say because it's like your children, but I really try to not make, make it seem like there's a difference between them. Of course, you know, my kid will be like, mom, asking for extra hugs during the day. So my oldest loved it from the beginning. My youngest still has a hard time with it today. Well, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please remember to hit that subscribe button down below, like, comment, share, all that fun stuff. Also, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next because I like to give you guys a little bit of everything. So let me know what you want to see. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe out there and I'll see you very soon.